In terms of uh, the microbes in our gut, they're not just innocent bystanders. They're actually you know, partners in health. Um, they take the components of the food that we can't digest, like fiber, but also polyphenols. Um, they transform certain fats and, and certain things that are present in fermented foods. Um, and they uh, transform them into health signals uh, that are important for our body, maybe as important as the standard nutrients that we think about, like macro micronutrients, the proteins, the fats, the carbohydrates, vitamins and minerals that we get in our diet. Um, and I think the next um, you know, 50 to 100 years uh, in nutrition will be focused on those bioactives um, that help promote a healthy microbiome and then the factors that the microbiome uh, produce for, for our health. Our guts are just generally not all that accustomed to fiber. Um, only 5% of people get enough, if you can believe it. Generally, people get about 15 grams or less, and we should be having 30 grams. What makes the gases, the microbes in our gut, and folks that um, have imbalances in their gut microbiome, that gas will be more. And because the gas in a, a balanced uh, microbial ecosystem will be consumed by secondary degraders. Um, so you, you have the, you know, the first guys that are eating the primary fiber and then what they produce is being consumed by other members, the secondary degraders. Uh, that said, um, if we go low and go slow, that's the mantra in reintroducing fibers into our diet, whether it's, you know, broccoli, uh, which is another big culprit or cruciferous vegetables in general, the relatives of broccoli or beans, if you go low and go slow, that gives your gut microbiome a chance to re-equilibrate. Um, and um, you, you might still experience some winds, but it may not be as bad. Uh, and um, your gut will eventually adapt uh, to the higher amounts. You just don't want to overdo it at the Molecules, microbes, movement, and minds. Molecules is food. But okay. for each of these, there's a flip side, it's toxins as well, or unhealthy food. Uh, microbes, it's your healthy microbiome lives on in and around us in the environment, but it's also pathogens, viruses and bad bacteria. The movement, that's exercise, uh, but it's also um, lack of exercise and too much screen time, too much indoor time. Uh, and then mind, it's mindfulness practices, uh, stress management, good sleep. And then the flip side would be insomnia, stress, um, our workaholic lives. And there's the four M's, but then there's also one more letter and it's the big C. It's the foundation to all of these columns. Uh, and that's community. Um, that's our relationships. That's our um, friends and our family and, um, those connections that really, truly give us meaning uh, in life, make us inclined to want to eat well and exercise, give us friends to do that with. Um, I'd say it's probably the most important and that's actually borne out in the literature too. Um, how our community or our, um, you know, work friends or, general friends, our family, um, are, are so important to health and life. I you know speak up for the ladies. <laughs> super, super interesting is, uh, changes in hormones profoundly impact the gut microbiome. Uh, and so depending, um, on what those hormones are, where one is in their cycle, where one is not just in their cycle, but their life cycle, right. In menopause, um, that specific combination of hormones um, can lead to a more inflammatory or less inflammatory profile in their microbiome. And so a lot of the symptoms that um, one might experience in menopause, surely coming from the hormones directly, but they're, I'm intrigued by this possibility that there are these indirect uh, mechanisms as well. And so let's say and there's some evidence to support this, but let's say you have hormones that are leading to more of an inflammatory 
gut microbiome, um, which inflames the immune system um, and you're producing inflammatory cytokines as a result, um, maybe a lot of the symptoms that one experiences during menopause are in part related to that as well. Um, and perhaps, just perhaps, there are ways of helping keep that microbiome on track despite those hormonal fluctuations. And diet is the obvious way of doing it. And if you think about, well, what is it in diet um, that's going to most profoundly impact its fiber, its prebiotic fibers, low fat fibers, it's things like beta-glucan resistance.